I would like to call the June 15, 2020 Longmont Water Board uh, meeting to order. Tammy, could you please start with a roll call? Thank you, Todd. I'll start with board members. Uh, Todd Williams, chair. Renee Davis, vice chair. Board member John Caldwell. Present. Board member Kathy Peterson. And board member Roger Lane. Okay, for city staff. You. Oh. Go ahead, uh, Tim. Okay. Um, for city staff, we have um, staff member Ken Hewson. Present. Uh, staff member Nelson Tipton. Present. Staff member Les. Wes Lowry. Present. Staff member Kevin Bowden. Present. And staff member Francie Jaffe. Present. And staff member Jason Elkins. Present. And then for our council liaison, uh, council member Marsha Martin. Present. Fantastic, thank you. Great. Thanks, Tammy. All right, the next item is a um, reminder of the public. Anyone wishing to speak during public invited to be heard, item six on the agenda, will need to watch the live stream of the meeting. Um, instructions for how to call in to provide comment will be given during the meeting and displayed on the screen at the appropriate time during the meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes per person and each speaker will be asked to state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding with their comments. Item four on the agenda is approval of the previous month's minutes. Has the board had a chance to review the meeting minutes? Is there any comments? I don't hear any. Um, if there's no comments, I need a motion um, to approve the, the February 24th, 2020 meeting minutes. I move to approve. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Caldwell. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Okay. Looks like it passes unanimously. All right, the next item is the water status report. Is that Nelson or Wes who's gonna give that? Yes, I'll, I'll present that information to the board. So the flow at Lyons at 115 this afternoon was 391 CFS. The 124 year average flow on this date is approximately 585 CFS, and that's very close to our peak. Um, Ralph Price Reservoir is currently full and spilling, and we're releasing approximately 170 CFS. All local reservoirs are full or nearly full. The peak runoff at Lyons occurred on uh, June 4th with a peak of 557 CFS. Our normal peak would uh, occur generally around uh, June 12th. Union Reservoir is full at 28 feet or 12,768 acre feet and re releasing 11 and a half CFS. The call on the St. Varane is a supply ditch with an admin number of 10378 and a priority date of May 31st, 1878. The call on the main stem of the South Platte is Harmony Ditch with an admin of 17290 and a priority date of November 20th, 1885. At the end of May, local storage was approximately 86% full or currently at approximately 95% full. So essentially all reservoirs are full or near full as they want to be. And that's about all I've got on the water status report unless there's some questions. Are there any questions for Wes on the water status report? I Wes, have a... Go ahead, any, John. I'm sorry, John. Any uh, thoughts about why it peaks so early this year? 
this year has been very non-traditional, not expected. We, uh, we started to think we were going to see flows over 600 CFS, and for some reason they just dropped. Then um, we thought, and so we've been, re we've been reacting at button rock releases according to what we were seeing and also what we were uh, historically finding. And so I've, I've been in constant communication with the water commissioner um, and we're all kind of perplexed as to why it was such a yawner of a runoff this year. Uh, we had good snowpack above average and all indications were that we were going to have a fairly substantial runoff. We had hot weather there earlier at 90 degrees plus, which would have normally led to um, some higher flows, but for some reason they just didn't come out that way. And so this year has been like none other that I've experienced, at least in the nearly 28 years with water resources. And so um, I think the ground was just taking a lot of that water before it was accruing back to the stream. Uh, I think that was part of it. Um, we've kind of seen a little bit of a resurgence in flow since last, uh, this weekend. I think that was a complement of these higher uh, temperatures. I think we're scheduled to get about mid nineties tomorrow and 90 on Wednesday. So I don't, I think we'll probably see another little bump in flows, but I do believe our peak that we saw on the fourth at 585 was probably going to still remain our peak. Renee, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I have a question and it's not so much about water supply, but it's water demand. Are you guys seeing anything different with the uh, COVID situation? So similar to the um, stream runoff, um, when it got hot there earlier in May, the plant seen a fairly high uh, peak, um, a, a daily peak. We, we would normally be running at that time around say 20 or 22 MGD. And we were going between 26 to 28 million gallons a day. But within a week, it went back to normal. And since, and since then, the flow rates have been near normal or below normal. So we're not, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure the cause of it. Um, but that's, that's what we've been seeing is below normal or just barely at normal um, flows at, at the plants. So the reason I bring this up is at Denver water, we've got uh, um, some AMI, some rapid need bead meters distributed in like multifamily and commercial and all of that. And so we're monitoring our situation. And then of course we've got the monthly data and we're seeing residential is like humming along at like 20% above normal. Um, and then commercial is way down. And I was just wondering if you guys, our overall is up though. Um, it, like the, the, the residential being is such enough of a mix even in Denver that it being high is enough to offset commercial being reduced with everything shut down. And I just wanted to share that nugget with you guys because it could be a big water year. Yeah, well, and we'll talk a little bit about our water demand and when we do our water supply and drought management plan. But so far, it's um, it's been about average or about what we've been expecting. But every time I think I've got an idea what's going to happen, it's definitely changed. So. Uh, we'll find out in July if my story is still true. <laughs> right. Or, you know, the weather could change and everything yeah. changes. But just thought I'd share that, too. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Anyone else? Kathy, Roger, any comments, questions? No. Okay. Thank you. So next item is the public invited to be heard in special presentations. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read this little statement here. Um, for any public Aaron? wishing to speak for public invited to be heard, please call in now. Here. The following, Hello? Excuse me. Sure. We're having problems with the live stream. It is okay. not connecting for me. So this is sort of a moot point at this point in the, in the meeting. If I do get it running, uh, I will let staff know and perhaps offer another opportunity toward the end of the meeting, if that's all right. 
that's fine. We can just um, postpone the public invited to be heard until I hear back from you. Um, Very good. Okay, that's fine. All right, so if we move on to item seven, agenda revisions and submission of documents. Um, Ken, do you guys have any um, additional items or revisions? I have none. Okay. So item eight is development activity. We have two items that I think they both need recommendations um, by the board to council for approval. Um, is it Wes or Nelson gonna go over those or? I'll review those with the board. And okay. I can take uh, um, singularly or take them both together, however you all prefer. But uh, let me share that information. The first one was Sugar Mill Paired Homes Final Plat. That's a 17.43 acre parcel. Um, the historic water rights were transferred at time of annexation. And after the application of the historic water rights, uh, there's left a remaining deficit of 50.739 acre feet. Sugar Mill Paired Homes Final Plat is being developed for 112 paired homes and we've had some preliminary discussions that they may be looking at doing cash and loo for that but that's not been decided for sure um, the other item in front of in front of the board today is uh, springs at longmont final plat that's a 25.703 acre parcel it's located south of highway 119 and east of county line road um, historic water rights were transferred and after application of those historical water rights left a remaining 68.602 acre foot raw water deficit. That particular development is uh, being developed for 212 unit multifamilies um, and they too are uh, thinking that they're gonna do cash in lieu and to give the board a sense if both of those um, developments come through with cash in lieu under its current rate of $17,683 an acre foot, uh, th those would add up to $2,110,000 approximately. So we might get a, a surge of uh, cash in lieu, but um, that, that will be to uh, be determined. And that's all I have on those unless there's questions on either of those. Are there any questions for Wes on the two developments? If not, um, why don't we take them one at a time? We'll need a, a motion to the council for approval. Um, the first one is the Sugar Mill Pair Homes Final Plat. Is there a motion to recommend that um, the water um, requirement for council approval. I'd so move, John. Okay, so we got a motion. We'll say Roger motion. John seconded. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. All right, it carries. Um, why don't we go ahead and do the second one, which is Springs at Longmont Final Plat. Once again, I need a motion for recommending the water calculation to the city council for approval. Uh, I move that we recommend that for approval. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Renee has a motion, Kathy with a second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, carries. Okay, um, let me see. So the, the next item that we've got um, is under general business and is the City of Longmont's 2020 Water Supply and Drought Management Plan. Wes, looks like you're on a roll here. All right. So what's included in the packet is the same information that came to the board and their information informational packet uh, prior. Um, I, we did not up, update this um, as what you have, but the overall recommendation is the same. So I'm gonna go through and hit some of the highlights. If you wanna talk about any of the details, let me know. 
but I think all the information in there uh, is, is relatively clear. Um, back in, uh, back last year in 2019, we were in a sustainable conservation level drought response. Uh, we remain there to date. Uh, last year, our total water supply available was 22,709 acre feet and our demand was 15,356 acre feet. Um, in our, typically the board would have reviewed this back in uh, April or May and we would have had some snowpack information. There is none updated. Uh, that snowpack is, uh, has already basically ran out. Um, we've, we've got, um, just as a reminder, and I'm just going to cover the sustainable conservation level pieces. If we want to talk about uh, level one, two, or three, we can. But the, the description of drought supply response for a sustainable conservation level speaks to looking at the storage volume in Ralph Price Reservoir. Um, again, as I reported earlier today, we are full and spilling. And that's what we, we were projecting to have happen no later than July 15th of this year. Uh, the second criteria was that the raw water supply availability projection for the current and mixed water year was at a level greater than 135%. And you would see that uh, when this was, when this plan was produced, it was at 150% and it's actually slightly higher than that now. So we've met those two criteria that would keep it in the sustainable conservation level. Um, I want to jump to kind of our tables. There's a table A and a table B where we kind of detail some of the uh, specific items. Uh, the, in that table, we had a CBT quota declaration of 70%. Um, as I understand, uh, the board, Northern Board, uh, is considering increasing that another 10%, which uh, furthers our water supply available. But at the 70%, our current direct flow water rights are yielding approximately 7,300 acre feet. Our 1929 transfer decrees are projected to yield around 1,300 acre feet. Our pipeline decrees at 1,800 acre feet. Our transferred reservoir storage decrees, that's basically Pleasant Valley Reservoir, is a little over 1,100 acre feet. We have about 4,200 of reservoir storage available for releases. That would be out of Button Rock. Transfer water rights. We had just over 12,000 acre feet. Again, that would go up an additional little over a thousand acre feet if the board issues that 80, if and when they issue that additional 10% quota, taking it to 80%. We show our projected, our projected carryover between years. That's what we do each year. We like to carry over the maximum amount of CBT to put us in the best position possible for the following year. So we, try to reserve, if possible, uh, 2,800 acre feet for that. And then we have approximately 1,000 acre feet for water rental and leases. So our total projected water availability, or available, excuse me, is 24,000 acre feet. And right now our demand is projected to be 16,119 acre feet. And so, that's kind of the table A details. The table B details, again, if you were to look at that, I believe it's page 27 of your packet. The, um, we were projecting to be full on July 15th and we're there and we have full intentions of remaining there, which puts us in that sustainable conservation level, which asks it to be greater than 90%. So um, there's really not a lot to say other than we're in a good position. We've got our reservoirs full. We've got a, a robust CBT um, amount of transbasin water to, uh, available for us. And the water demand is looking to be average uh, so far. If it, even, if it goes above average, 
I think given that we're probably, I'm guessing closer to 155% of supply to demand and knowing that we need to be within 135%, um, I think we've got a lot to be able to give and to still be able to remain at a conservation uh, level status. And so that would be staff's recommendation. We're planning to take this to water board in July, I believe it's July 10th, and uh, to city council for their uh, acceptance. So what we're looking for here from you, uh, from you all today is uh, to accept the uh, drought plan as presented and to recommend that we pass this on to city council. Thank you, Wes. Um, is there any questions for Wes on the presentation? I can make just a couple of comments. So that 10% quota that Wes was talking about did get approved last week. So that will be um, about a thousand acre feet of additional CBT water available. Um, maybe a couple other notes. They are, they're kind of on the border on whether or not they think the CBT system is gonna fill or I should say spill or not. Um, and that's depending on whose forecast you want to believe in. I think most are still suggesting they'll spill, but it'll be um, relatively small amounts. Um, but with that came the decision that they're not going to pump Windy Gap this year. So there will not be any yield specific to the Windy Gap project um, for this year, given the, all the storage is full. So just a couple of notes there. Um, if there's no other comments, as Wes recommended or suggested, we need a um, approval of the um, drought management plan and a recommendation to the city council of a sustainable drought conservation level. Is there a board member that would make that motion? I'd so move. Okay, we have a motion. Aldwell. All right, John seconded. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Great, that motion carries. All right, so we're on to um, item 10, which is items from staff. The first item is 10A, Water Smart Water and Energy Efficient Grant Funding Update. Um, Francie, I think you're gonna handle that. Yeah, so the, the board last September provided a, a letter of support for our application for the, um, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation's Water Smart Matching Grant for uh, applying for funding for the AMR, transition to AMR meters. Um, the city did receive that grant funding, um, but I believe primarily do, I'm guessing, they didn't say specifically why, I'm guessing it is probably related to COVID, um, but the USBR is greatly delayed. So even though we received notification that we received the award a couple of months ago, um, we will not have our next steps meeting until October. But just wanted to thank the board for their letter of support. Great, thank you, Francie. Is there any questions on that? Wonderful, well, thank you for that update, Francie, appreciate it. So item 10B is the water resource engineering projects update. Jason, are you gonna handle this one? Yes, sir. So okay. I just wanna let the board know that uh, we, as of today, we've issued notice to proceed to CNL Water Solutions for the, uh, the access point uh, installation for the South St. Vrain pipeline. Um, uh, as I may have mentioned before, we're currently doing the rehabilitation project on the South St. Marine pipeline. Uh, and there's some stretches in there that are like 2000 feet long and they can only um, jet and vacuum within like a 500 foot reach. So this uh, phase of the project, they'll be constructing temporary and permanent access entry points. Um, typically consists of uh, installing a type of vault, which is a uh, a fancy way of saying a man, uh, manhole. So um, we we'll issue the notice to proceed and they should get the vaults on order. Hopefully they'll have those within the next six weeks and we'll be installing them uh, in the coming months. Uh, we're still on schedule to have uh, the South St. Vrain pipeline um, rehabilitated and in service uh, by the end of this year. Um, currently it is on schedule and on budget. 
Uh, a new development is the South St. Vrain Pipeline Pump Station Project. Uh, prior to this meeting, it was um, just kind of a concept, just kind of a, an idea that we had, and it's now um, been greenlit uh, for the FEMA PAP funding that we have. That PAP funding is on the order of eight hundred dollars to $900,000. And so we've decided to make this project a priority for that PAP funding. And uh, the project is estimated to be around $3 million, which I know is a lot, uh, but we're going to defund some other lower priority projects in order to fund this one. Uh, one of the main reasons we really like this project is it really does complement uh, our South St. Brain Pipeline Rehab Project. Um, the goal is to be able to pump water from the South St. Brain Pipeline into the North St. Brain Pipeline. Um, this will be extremely beneficial, um, especially in the winter time when we're trying to use some of our senior water rights uh, and not having to convey that water into the Highland Ditch and uh, deal with icing and debris. Um, so anyway, um, we're hoping to have this project completed. Uh, it has to be completed by the end of next year. Um, but we, we suspect that the majority of the project is going to be uh, planning and permitting. Uh, land acquisition, the actual construction of the project should be no more than a month. So, any questions on that? Any questions for Jason? I, I actually have one, Jason. Um, so, it looks like you've got, what, 2.1, 2.2 million um, in funding that you'll be moving around um, to fund that project. Is that right? That's correct. And it won't just come out of uh, uh, water resource projects. There's uh, other uh, water utilities and uh, other, uh, other CIPs that will probably be defunded as well. Okay. And I, I guess I ask, I know one of the concerns on the Windy Gap firming side is, you know, what the ultimate cost is and whether or not, you know, um, there's, if the cost goes up on that, that you'd be in a similar situation where you'd have to potentially move funding around. So I don't know, is there still, I mean, there's still kind of quote unquote optional projects out there that could, and I don't know, can you maybe give an update on the latest when you get um, firming project costs, but I know that's a concern of the council. So just want to be kind of aware of it or what flexibility um, we have within the budget. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the goal of defunding other projects to fund this one would be with the intent so that we don't have to reduce um, uh, our, our, our budget, our Windy Gap participation just because of this project. And so uh, we're, we're meeting with uh, Becky Doyle, uh, Barb McGrain, and Dale Redemaker later this week so that we can discuss which projects um, uh, on that list that we could potentially defund for this year and next year and push those out two to three years. Um, for example, we have about $600,000 next year budgeted for uh, the Upper North Line uh, access improvements. Um, that is a priority project, but um, there's that would be something that we could push out two to three years. There's no immediate need uh, to make those uh, improvements just yet. And so by freeing up, uh, money from smaller projects like that, we'll be able to make up that difference of around $2, $2 million. We're also gonna do some value engineering. Uh, instead of installing two pumps, uh, we'll potentially just install one pump with the ability to add a second pump at a later time. So um, there's gonna be some, um, you know, some, some careful consideration as to how we're gonna do this, but it, it is our intent not to have to uh, decrease our participation level just because of this one project. Thank you. And then whether you go with one pump or two, you'd still have enough expenditure on the city side to get the eight to 900,000 in federal funding. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on, on that for Jason? Okay. My question was the same. Okay, great. Thanks Renee. All right. Um, so the next item that we've got is the Windy Gap firming project update. Ken? Yeah, I'll go ahead and cover that. A um, couple of areas I wanted to cover. Um, the first is um, the legal aspects of the project. Still haven't heard anything on the uh, federal cases, so 
that that's on kind of perpetual hold. <laughs> we hope hope to hear someday. Uh, so, uh, on the state um, water rights filing, though, um, it, it it's looking better all the time. Um, all of the objectors have now um, settled. We've got settlement stipulations with everybody. Um, that opened up basically the arena to to draft up and submit the final decree um, as in any water rights case the final the, the final form of the decree is is fairly closely scrutinized as well and so currently the um, other participants in this water uh, the state water rights case are reviewing that and we're hoping that that is getting very, very close. Um, so that'll, that'll be a major victory that really almost any time uh, sh soon, we hope um, that will be um, moving forward. Uh, one other related item is the connectivity channel around um, the Windy Gap Reservoir on the Colorado River. Uh, that actually has, uh, it reached 30% design uh, this last month, which was is kind of one of the initial uh, uh, goal, uh, milestones. One, once we reached the 30% design, um, the the proposal is for this particular project is to get a design build uh, firm, uh, and so um, the next step for that project is getting a design build team together. Um, so Northern staff are putting together a request for um, qualifications and proposal to get that design build team. That helps That helps in the design process is a pretty specialized um, activity that's gonna go on to build that connectivity channel. So it'll be very helpful to have a contractor on board as that um, goes forward. Um, a related item is that um, there's been a formal request put in to extend the deadline for, so part of the funding for the connectivity channel, a large part of the funding is coming from the Natural Resources uh, Conservation Service, of, uh, so it used to be SCS, Soil Conservation, the federal government. And that has a deadline to be um, completed and it's going to be really hard to meet that deadline and so for a number of reasons um, w it's felt that that might be able to be extended for a year and so hopefully so that's going to be a formal request um, that's put in on that um, then uh, jumping back to the actual um, Windy Gap firming project as you're aware the uh, the contractor Barnard Construction um, is on board, and they're they're actually working. They're doing um, some site prep and some uh, cleaning and grubbing, uh, but mostly they're working on project submittals. Um, so far, we've got about a hundred project submittals in, done, and approved, ready ready to um, acquire material, and only twenty five percent to go. So. About three fourths of the way through the project submittal process, it's a pretty ex extended and, and lengthy part of, of a large project like that. Um, still continuing to try to work with WAPA on the power line relocation through the site. Um, I totally understand it, but they're saying you know they can't move forward until after the federal lawsuit, even though the federal lawsuit has nothing to do with relocation of the power line. They feel that there's enough of a nexus to the power line relocation with the project that they are the WAP is uncomfortable in moving that power line until after that um, federal case. So I get that. I understand that. And actually, if the for some reason the project couldn't go forward, then we wouldn't need the power line removed anyway. So unfortunately, that that will be difficult because that'll be in the way of moving forward with the project once we do get the federal lawsuit um, taken care of and are ready to move forward. Um, Larimer County has asked um, the project to uh, 
I'll just say refresh the intergovernmental agreement for the Chimney Hollow construction site. Um, Larimer County chose or decided they did not need a 1041 permit for that site because essentially anything that would happen in that 1041 permitting process had already been worked out um, and uh, prior uh, with the participants and Larimer County. Uh, and of course, Larimer County is anxious to get it, the project done so they can open their Blue Mountain Recreation Area, open space area. Um, so, but they are asking to refresh that IGA just to reflect any changes that have occurred in the last four or five years since that um, uh, has, has gone forward. Um, Probably the biggest thing that's happening right now, well, it's not the biggest thing, but it's the most significant thing I think Water Board needs to know is that um, since about last February, January and February, um, we've been working on the form of an allotment contract that all of the project participants will sign. Um, when it, you know, when it actually comes down, once we get a permit, once we're ready to, to kick off the project, once we're ready to start the financing, um, we'll have an, a, an allotment contract, a final allotment contract. We've been doing interim uh, allotment contracts since then. That allotment contract is actually coming along pretty good and is close to, is probably, you know, well, more than 50, probably close to 75% done. We have uh, additional, it got obviously similar with everything else in COVID. It got uh, slowed down a little bit the last month, month and a half, but um, it is um, getting kicked back up again. And we really expect to see that um, this summer. Um, as such, um, I'm not sure it'll be July, but it, it may very well be. Um, we'll be bringing a, a draft copy of that allotment contract in for Water Board to, to, to review um, and possibly starting to initiate um, the final um, project participation uh, details, capacity, uh, financing, and those kind of issues. So I'm not sure, um, I won't promise that it'll happen in July, but I believe it might actually start in July. We're getting we're kind of getting that close, uh, 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 getting much closer on the allotment contract. And once that happens, then, you know, it'll be a fairly quick, well, it won't be real quick, but it'll, we'll, re we'll need to start quickly on that uh, allotment. And so we'll want water board um, well, uh, well versed on that before we actually come to you and ask you <laughs> to make a final recommendation on that final allotment contract. So. Um, I think that's all good news, um, and uh, things things are progressing well. So um, that's all I have right now. Um, so I'll be happy to open it up if there are any questions. Are there any questions for Ken? I don't see any. Okay, thank you for the update, Ken. All right, so next item um, is 11, is items from the board. The review of major project listings and items tentatively um, scheduled for future board meetings. And I guess 13 kind of relates to that. Um, we have the cash and lieu that'll be revisited in July. Is that right, Ken? Yes, that's correct. Um, we just didn't quite get all the data this month, but we should be ready next month to do that. I guess along those lines, I have not heard um, any changes to the budget for the Windy Gap Firming Project, is that correct? Just since we missed the last cash and lieu date? That is correct. We do not have any additional, um, and we probably won't have any real revisions on that unless we miss, we've obviously missed the April <laughs> uh, uh, project start date. In the bidding process, there were two start dates, one in April and one in uh, fall, um, certainly we're hopeful that the federal case will get done and then we'll be able to meet that fall deadline. Um, that would be kind of the next um, critical thing. If that doesn't happen, then we'll be negotiating with the contractor for a new um, 
bid price, and that then would uh, adjust that Windy Gap project estimate. Okay. Is there any other, from the rest of the board, any other questions, comments on future? There's a listing in the packet of um, water project status report. Any other questions, comments from the board? Okay, hearing none, um, the next item is the um, informational items and water board correspondence. Does any of the board have anything? If not, I do. Um, the, the, and let me get my notes here. <clears throat> I just, I don't know if everybody's aware, but this is John Caldwell's last um, water board meeting. He is term limited. And I just wanted to personally say thank you to John. He's been, uh, he's given, he's been a wealth of knowledge. He's given a lot of his time. Um, and I was looking at the water board a little write up and the best I can figure is he's been in involved on the water board or the liaison to the water board from the city council for almost 40 years. Um, I just think it's a testament to, you know, the civic duty he's felt and the, the amount of time and effort he's put forth to the city. So I just personally wanted to say thank you. Um, I talked to Ken and, and I'd like to, and I ran it by John, I think he's okay with it, is if we can figure out a proper social distancing way to do a reception, um, to say thank you for all the, the time and effort you've spent. Um, John, we'd sure like to do it. So I think Ken and staff are gonna work on that. I'll be in touch with the rest of the, the water board um, as we get hopefully some details on that. But I just wanna say thank you, John. It's been a, a pleasure to, to work with you. And um, I just, I, I really admire the, the work that you've done for the city. Thank you. <clears throat> well, it's, you know, it's been a real, uh, I don't know if joy is the right word, but I've, you know, I think I've learned, I've gotten more than I've given, put it that way. And starting with, you know, learning, uh, the water board is only 15 years old, six, 16 years old, 16 years after the home rule charter when I got on the board and Todd's grandfather and, um, Milt Nelson and Larry Flanders were the ones that really taught me a lot. And uh, Jim Sinia was the staff person at that point. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of water under the bridge <laughs> uh, since then. And uh, I just want to thank uh, everybody on the city staff, uh, starting like with Jim Sinia and then Pete Moore and now Dale and Ken and Nelson and Wes and Kevin. Um, I'd like to thank them for uh, everything they've done. And Tammy and the secretary have been, been uh, with the water board. And uh, also the, the, uh, the, the chair, such as Dennis Yan, Dennis was chair for a long time and then John Bruning and now, uh, uh, Todd. So um, thank you very much. It's really been, uh, it's been a real privilege for me to be able to be on the water board. So thank you very much. Thanks, John. Is there anything else that any of the board members have for the kind of good of the order? If not, do I need to check back? Tammy, do we need to revisit the public invited to be heard? Is that a possibility? Or are we, if not, I think we're ready to adjourn the meeting. Uh, Chair, I was not able to uh, recover that uh, opportunity. So, and my apologies to the board and city staff. I also failed to uh, present Wes's uh, presentation. So I was in the midst of trying to get the stream up. So no, you do not need to do the invited uh, public invited to be heard. You okay. are welcome to adjourn. Wonderful. Well, thank you all. And, and thank you, John, for all your, your service over the years. Have a good day, yeah. everyone. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, Todd. Yeah.